what kind of treatment can you do for H. pylori? It's a really common infection we can have in our gut, in our microbiome, and I've had other videos where I've talked about all the different kinds of signs and symptoms of H. pylori, but today let's talk about the treatments. Before we begin, please hit the like and the subscribe button and the bell to be notified when I post new videos every week. I am here to provide um, functional medicine information, gut health, hormone health, metabolic health related information. So I try to post one new video every week. I'm Dr. Shelley Meyer. Thanks so much for joining me. Uh, welcome back if you're returning and welcome if it's your first time here. So I am a functional medicine doctor, registered dietitian, and a family medicine doctor. And I have lots of videos on gut health, hormone health, and metabolic health. So there's tons of, of playlists and different videos to explore here. And I hope you do. But let's get you feeling better if you're here for that. And if you're on your health and healing journey, there's a lot of information available on those topics on the channel. But today you may be here just for H. pylori. And so let's talk about that. H. pylori is Helicobacter pylori. More than 50% of the population has H. pylori. Um, it's a matter of do you have an overgrowth and are you symptomatic? So let's talk about that a little bit. What can it do symptomatic wise? Gut problems, bloating, nausea, vomiting, um, reflux, heartburn, abdominal pain, um, sometimes other things that aren't gut related. Uh, check out my other video on that. Um, so fatigue skin symptoms, all other kinds of things can be a problem too. And sometimes diarrhea and constipation, usually more diarrhea, but some people, everybody's different. And so how do we know if we have H. pylori? More than 50% of the population has it and it's all a matter of overgrowth and symptoms. How do we know if we have it? So don't do a blood test. There are blood tests for H. pylori, but they don't, they're not accurate. Um, they're not as accurate as doing a breath or a stool test. So don't do a blood test, do a breath or a stool test. You could do those through LabCorp or Quest, through your primary care doctor or your internal medicine doctor, um, functional family medicine doctor, or functional medicine doctor. But my favorite way to look for it in the microbiome, and the only really way to look for it in the microbiome, other than you can do a conventional um, stool H. pylori test, but H. pylori is found um, among the many other balances, imbalances, and things we look for in the GI map, and I love the GI map to test your microbiome. I also love Genova's stool tests and doctor's data. They all have really good stool microbiome tests. So if you check out my Rupa Labs um, shop, you can check for, or you, sorry, you can if you don't have a doctor that you're working with or a provider that you're working with that's functional medicine or alternative medicine or willing or has an account with these uh, companies, you can order directly through my lab shop and get some answers that way. And sometimes that works out to be cheaper for you because you may not have the money to or the resources to work with a functional medicine doctor, but maybe you can cover the testing. So you could take that information from the testing and then check out these videos and check out information online and on my um, website about how to then work on whatever you might find in the in the testing. So that is a good way. And the other thing I love about GI map and H. pylori is it does tell us your virulence factors. Is it a really bad strain of H. pylori? So you would then find out, do you have the type that could lead to cancer? Do you have the type that would be more aggressive? And I really don't know of any other way to test for that. So check that out on the lab shop or talk with your provider about that. So if you're asymptomatic, you may not need to treat your H. pylori. So just because it's found on one of, on your, maybe your microbiome test, you don't necessarily need to treat it if you're asymptomatic. You could just have it like a lot of the population. But if you're symptomatic with any of the things in this video or in my video, that was the non-traditional symptoms of H. pylori, you may want to treat it. So what can you, oh, and also H. pylori it comes from fecal oral. So poop to mouth um, doesn't mean you're putting your poop in your mouth, but people don't wash their hands. If people don't wash their hands or you get it from food, you can also transfer it between partners via toothbrushes, kissing, saliva of some sort. So it's tricky, um, but it can definitely be in your mouth and not just in your the lower part of your or your intestinal microbiome. 
So what can you consider to use? Well, there's a traditional treatment that a primary care conventional doctor would do or an internal medicine doctor or GI doctor would do, and that's triple therapy or quadruple therapy. Usually it's clarithromycin, um, amoxicillin, uh, um, sometimes there's tetracycline and some of the old ones. We don't use those, that quite as much. Um, and metronidazole is an option, and then a proton pump inhibitor like protonics, um, omeprazole, that kind of thing. And then when it's quadruple therapy, you're adding in bismuth, which is the main ingredient in Pepto-Bismol. So that's your quadruple therapy. And then the triple therapy is two antibiotics and a proton pump inhibitor. I am not anti-triple or quadruple therapy. It's appropriate for people that have the aggressive strains. It's appropriate for people that have peptic ulcer disease or ulcers, but it might not be appropriate for everyone. So some herbal options are uh, deglycerinized licorice. That's the licorice plant, but they take out the portion that could contribute to um, hypertension and they make it deglycerinized so that it's not going to cause increased blood pressure or mess up your adrenal cortisol system. So that's an option. Um, taking that with meals, mastic gum is an option. MSM is an option. Berberine is an option. So there's some options of blends that I use in the description down below and you can get your full script discount, um, and savings. So also golden seal and oil of oregano. Now, what are some other options that aren't minerals? You can have zinc carnosine is great. I usually use zinc carnosine in anybody that I have with H. pylori. And also tell me in the comments if you've struggled with H. pylori. I've heard a lot on my other videos, so I really want to know kind of what you've tried. We could all learn from each other and what, you know, what your struggles are. I can't offer individual advice in there, but we can discuss back and forth, and I love hearing from you. So zinc carnosine, um, also it's important to check your pancreatic elastase. That you can check in some of, sometimes through LabCorp request. You can definitely check it in the microbiome that you get, the test from GI map. And that, if that's low, you don't have enough digestive enzymes or you don't have enough stomach acid to support healthy digestion, and that could be contributing to your H. pylori problem. So definitely that's another reason to get the GI map if you can afford it. And if, um, as long as you make sure you don't have SIBO, um, as long as you don't have SIBO, so if you don't have small intestinal bacterial overgrowth, then you also would want to consider doing a high dose probiotic blend. Um, I like orthomolecular's high dose orthomega. I mean, not orthomega, um, orthobiotic. I also like um, VSL um, probiotic, but they've changed their name. I'll put it in the description. So that really helps with H. pylori treatment also. And consider checking out your mouth. So you can have, I have an, I had an integrative dentist that did check for H. pylori in the mouth. You can check that way. Um, but you know, it, it often lives in the mouth. So if you find it in your microbiome or you find it through other testing, it is good to treat the mouth. So Biocide, and I'm going to put it in the description, they make a toothpaste that's really good for treating H. pylori. So I recommend if you have it to do a more thorough kind of natural treatment with H. pylori, which I'm going to show some recommendations in the description, but to also use the toothpaste, that's really helpful. And then to have the people in your household or people you may be sharing it with use the toothpaste and maybe get checked out if they need to. And then, um, you also could, oh, instead of the toothpaste, Biocytin makes a liquid, a, um, a, a pump dispenser that that's either I use, I usually don't use the capsules because I want people to swish and swallow that. Um, so if you're using that liquid, you don't necessarily have to use the toothpaste, but you could have other members of your household, if it's safe for them, use the toothpaste. And, um, you also want to consider those sources. So, talk with your your people you could be sharing it with maybe they need to get checked out now again if you have peptic ulcer disease try to work with your doctor and do the triple therapy or the quadruple therapy because that's going to be stronger it's not easy to tolerate um, I did have to have it one time and it did cause my SIBO to get worse but 
If that happens, check out my other CBO, CBO videos and my SIBO ebook, and you can work your way through that. Hopefully, it does not happen to you. But it can be rough to take those those antibiotics and the PPI, and the, um, the bismuth isn't usually so bad. But the PPI, um, some doctors, when you have H. pylori or gastritis or inflammation in the stomach, they will say to um, take the PPI like forever. The only reason to take PPI for an extended, and this is proton pump inhibitors, omeprazole, protonix, that kind of family. Only reason to take that for an extended period of time is if you do have an ulcer or have you know, had a stomach bleed. Otherwise, I don't recommend you taking that long term, but see my other videos about that. Um, another benefit of the GI map that I didn't go over before is it shows you what antibiotics you have genetic, you might potentially have genetic resistance to. So it can guide you on the antibiotic treatment as well. So that's kind of my rundown. There's the natural treatment. There's the prescription option. Now you know who would need the prescription option, who could get away with the natural treatment and then I'll share some of my favorite blends in the description down below. Be sure to check those out. That helps to support the channel if you order through Fullscript and then I have some affiliate links through Amazon if you prefer to do that but I do prefer Fullscript because I feel like you can really trust the sources and it's definitely coming from the actual company versus sometimes you have third-party sellers on Amazon that aren't as reliable. I've seen them stick other stickers on the wrong supplement and you don't want to be taking the wrong supplement. So anyway, um, if you want to check that out, check out the description. Also, I have links in the description on my microbiome course, Trust Your Gut, and links in the description on for my ebook for SIBO. A lot of times when you have H. pylori, you can also have SIBO, so it's good to treat both. So check that out and my other video on H. pylori. So I really hope this helped. Until next time, um, please remember to like, share, and subscribe. And until next time, take care of yourself, take care of the world around you, and I'll see you real soon.